Okay, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to Cosmic Maps. This is part two of Cosmic Maps. So today we are talking the Gryots, the Oracles, Prophets, Grill Keepers, and Messengers. Right, so we're going to be diving into this conversation today. It's probably best that you also watch the first part, which was Isitunya, because they're interconnected. But if you haven't, that's also fine. You will still be able to follow through with what we're going to share today. So when you join in, say hello. Let me know that you're here. I'm going to do a transmission first, and then I'm going to jump into any questions um, questions that I've received here and any questions that you have about the Gryots, about uh, the Oracles, Prophets, Grill Keepers, and Messengers. Yes, okay. Thank you everyone for joining. I'm going to jump in uh, if you're watching this. Oh, let me put on my headphones first. Just realized. That. Okay. Can you hear me? Let me know if you are able to follow. Hmm. Blessings, blessings, warriors. So good to see you here, Busim Tikazi, Dineo Fundeka, Makosi. Thank you for joining. Yes. Okay, so the Gryots. So this title, The Gryots, actually is inspired by Mudimu Moncho, who wrote Black Roots Science, which is an incredible book that, um, if you feel called to it, I definitely recommend that you check that book out. But he's a Motswana writer who's based in the U.S., and it's been really incredible reading his gnosis, his wisdom, for me as a Motswana because he's put into words some of the things that I know, but I have not had the maps for them because a lot of like our spiritual education, especially here in Southern Africa, is often based on, at least for me, I've, I've had to lean a lot on uh, the Zulu cosmology, right? And uh, trying to integrate the Zulu cosmology into my cosmology as a Mazwana. So Modimu Muncho has really helped with certain things, which I'm going to share with you about like um, what he says about the Gryots, who they are and how they connect to Isutunya. They are connected to Isutunya for those who are called to that. And obviously I'm going to add in my own gnosis and expand even more because um, what Modimu Muncho does or so far, the path that I've seen so far, or read so far, he's just given me the names and the maps, which is like really incredible. Okay, so highly recommend that book. So the Gryots, right? So in African spirituality, and I think this is also a universal thing, right? So there are two streams um, and two initiations that we can go through that can develop our skills, our spiritual gifts our innate latent um, natures and essences, our spiritual DNA, as well as our physical DNA, right? So the first one that is most common is the shamanic initiations, right? So this will be for those who become, you know, in South Africa, in, in Zulu cosmology to be the Sangomas. In my cosmologies, we call them Dingagatastwan. Right. So these are people who will be working with the earth medicine, right? And who are working with the purification of the blood, utilizing earth medicine, as well as earth consciousness, which in this case means ancestral consciousness, ancest blood ancestral consciousness, uh, to be specific, right? So a person can go through that initiation. I won't be going into that because that was not an initiation I went through myself. I'm going to be sharing about the Gryots, who are the second group um, that are also spiritually gifted and spiritually called, and they have spiritual missions, right? And that mission is, as we've, we've been speaking, more cosm cosmically inclined, 
but they also, of course, also work with the DNA. So there are two types of the gryots, according to Mudimu Moncho, which just helps us to kind of like map them. Right. So the first type, and it's a small group of people. I don't even know if it's still very viable in your community. Let me know if you've ever met these type of people. These are usually people who, from a very young age, that are identified as um, the graduate of the family or the community. And from that young age, they are taught the history of the lineage of the land and they are taught ancestral wisdom by the elders who have identified that these are the gryots, right? And these people will end up being like the oral historians, right? The poets, right? In ancient times, these would be the storytellers, essentially. They would tell the stories of the land and they would keep the wisdom of the land and they will, um, the way that that knowledge, ancestral knowledge or wisdom will be transferred will be from, um, from oral initiation where you are taught these information by an elder, right? So I feel like as we've been stepping into the modern timelines, this practice is not as active as it used to be in ancient times. Um, yeah, I have met one griot of this form in my lifetime so far. And I think this, she's a young girl for her, she is able to go through this initiation because her father is a practicing healer. So he already identified that she has that skill. She was called to, to be the keeper of wisdom, right? So that's the first type. Mudimu Muncho calls this baseiki, right? Or, um, Pura will be mosaic, right? You'll be a mosaic in my language, right? So this is oral historians, mystics storytellers, poets, those who kept the stories um, and they will share the stories with the, with the land, with the community, right? And then the second type, this is the type I resonate with that I believe I am and maybe you are also this and this is the type I will be particularly talking a lot about today, right? This is Batsidi in my language. These are essentially those, the word Batsidi literally means those who are alive, right? And then when we extend that even more, it means those who are living with the ancestors. So Batsidi or these gryots, they are able to live with human beings, have a human life here, and also live with their ancestors. To expand this, this means that these are people who are able to travel to the land of the ancestral, uh, of the ancestors, the ancestral garden, right? And they're able to receive wisdom directly from the ancestors, the elders, and bring it back to, to the land of the, the living, the humans, right? So this group of griots are the poet, the prophets, the oracles, the priestesses, the priests, and the grail keepers, the messengers, right? You may be this group, sorry, but you may be this group, the Batsidi. Um, this group, essentially, in your spiritual DNA, when you came here, right, you had one, a DNA coding, um, that <laughs> now this question just kind of threw me off you know yeah so you have a dna coding that allows you to be able to travel across the realms right just for understanding purposes every person has been able has traveled across realms across dimensions one of the easiest way where you may see this is when you are sleeping when you are sleeping you are literally traveling across dimensions you are traveling across realms right so everyone in a way has been to the ancestral realm but of course the the level in which you are able to go how far and how deep you can go into that and how conscious you can be when you go into these realms, yeah, that is often uh, connected to your initiation and your cultivation, right? But it's this, what I'm talking about is not as unique as we want to make it seem, right? 
because you are a divine being, we spoke about like how you are already an eternal being. So there isn't anything that I can do that you can't do. You already have this potential in your in your codex, right? So the Batidi, what is different about them is that one when they come here, they already have in the spiritual DNA as well as that physical DNA. This code that allows them to travel across the realm with more ease than maybe the average person. And they may be able to do that from a young age where they will experience ancestral spirits or even cosmic spirits, different types of spirits in their, in their life, right? And especially when you are young, you may not even notice that you are a Mutidi, but you would have these different experiences that are connected to uh, accessing other levels of consciousness, right? Remember, we, sp we spoke about how Isutunya is primordial consciousness, it's a cosmic consciousness. That cosmic consciousness is connected to different beings that hold it or that are guardians of it or that are expressions of it, like ancestors, like angels, like um, guardians, uh, Christ and officers of the Christ, all of these are just manifestation of a consciousness, right? And so you can be able to access that. Why would you be able to access that? Because you are also that, right? In the way that you are able to relate to other human beings because you are also a human being, right? So the Gryots are these cryots, the Batidi, they, they are able to go to the ancestral realm naturally because their DNA coding has allowed them to go into that. And when we talk about like a DNA coding or a DNA encryption, right? A DNA encryption basically means, you know, how like in a computer, they literally have to put codes to program that computer to function a certain way those codes, those numbers, 010001, that's an encryption, right? So if you think of yourself as a quantum computer or a divine computer, you also have this encryption. These encryptions that are unique to you, but there are some encryptions that are obviously the same across, which will be what we call a template, right? So an encryption, a, uh, an encryption of an app may be, it may follow the same route to create an app. You have to follow the same kind of sequence, right? So when we come to us, there is a DNA sequence or encryption that is connected to a griot, someone who is going to be a prophet, someone who has the potential to be a prophet, a messenger, a healer, um, an oracle, a priestess. It's in your DNA. And so I, I, I say this because I want us to collapse this idea that you are forced into being a messenger. It's not so much forced as that's who you are, actually. It's, it's, it's encrypted in you. Oh, that sounds very tiki tiki. But yeah, it's already, it's written before you were born, right? That you will be this, right? You will, you will express yourself as this. Right. So is everyone, does everyone has the potential to become a prophet, oracle, priestess, and so on? That DNA code, because it belongs to a collective consciousness, it is possible. But then there are those who is already active in them. And it's active in you because you incarnated in a bloodline where there were, are already people who are that, who are, po are prophets and oracles and priests and priestesses and healers, right? So also here, when we are talking about this griots, they're not nest, they're, they're, the energy of this, this group is that they are at their core wisdom keepers. They're here to keep the wisdom and to share this wisdom as messages, prophetic messages, Right, what I call this oracular oracular transmissions. Every time I'm like, I'm here to do a transmission, I'm transmitting the wisdom as I have synthesized it, as I have learnt it, and I've also been shown. And sometimes it's genuinely me actually transmitting it from a higher dimension and 
yeah, even for me, I later listen, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. My human will say that, right? Yes. So this group, that work is to cultivate the primordial consciousness between within individuals that are here to awaken our cosmic memory, our cosmic heritages, um, and also our cosmic citizenship, right? And because we forgot that we are cosmic, we are multidimensional, we exist in different dimensions, and that we are eternal beings that are the children of God, right? So this group of the Christ, they're here for that role. And this is why you will find them in different um, spaces where they speak a lot. They are orators, right? So the Batidi, you find the prophets, most of them are in the church, right? And also I'm going to just define what's different about, like what is, different, what is the difference between a prophet and oracle or priestess? The difference in general is just, it's where they are, which, which spiritual system they're using for that wisdom or for that messages. That's the difference, but they're just the same. There are people who live with the ancestors who can go into higher dimensions and receive wisdom from there as what we will call a prophetic message or an illumination that I just suddenly knew this, right? I was touched by the hand of the Holy Spirit and then this came through me and I shared this with someone. That is actually a more conscious way of living with the ancestors. There is other deeper ways in which this looks like as you, the more you get initiated and you, you really cultivate what I'm talking about. Right? So the difference is the spiritual beliefs, but they're really one thing. Right? So a prophet will be a person who is transmitting wisdom from the ancestral realm. They will never say it that way though, but they are receiving this wisdom from the unseen realm or the spiritual realms. And these prophets, most of the time, they do this through the lens of uh, religion, right? They will be doing this through the lens of the Christ, through the lens of scripture, a doctrine, a spiritual religious doctrine, right? Under Christianity or Islam or um Judaism, all the different religions, right? They, will, they are called prophets, right? And prophets, just like all the other griots, they are always there because these allow the higher consciousness support because when a planet is going through its evolution, which is kind of like all the time, but particularly when a planet is going through an evolution, um, griots are born so that they can um, update the collective consciousness on what is going on and uh, support them in stepping into the next level of awareness, of awakening, of evolution, right? So prophets, if you, yeah, they've always been there. And maybe many of us, we only know the griots as the prophets, right? And often they speak, like I said, from the lens of um, a, a religious doctrine. Um, and then when we are talking about priestesses, right, here we are also often working within a spiritual system that has a lot to do with, um, you know, the gods and goddesses, right, um, and they are also still working with the same field. It, it is Isutunya field, the cosmic consciousness, the primordial. But they are listening maybe in particular to a different archetype, right? So that will be the different. The prophets will be listening to the officers of the Christ. They'll be listening to the Holy Spirit. They'll be listening to Jesus Christ and um, other Christed beings. That's what the prophet will be doing. While the, the high priestesses or priests are listening to, they could be listening to the same, the Holy Spirit and the offices of the Christ, but they could also be listening 
to the gods and to the goddesses. They could also be listening to the elements, the elementals, the divas, right? Um, the earth as well, right? I noticed that the prophets tend to literally have a huge no-no with elemental consciousness, but the priestesses um, yeah, are often initiated into a, um, a vast cosmology, right? A vast understanding. Right. Are you with me? I know I went so deep uh, already. Are you following? It's a lot. Yeah, let me know in the chat. So that is what the, the priestesses are, are here doing. The grail keepers, right? The grail keepers, these are a particular group of griots that are here for the work of DNA regeneration, right? And so for them, they're here particularly to bring wisdom about how do we transmute the traumas and the curses that is held in the DNA that will allow human beings to begin to access more and more of the higher realms, right? Because it's the DNA that allows us to travel across dimensions, right? So um, the grill keepers, they are, yeah, they're keeping the, it's often a very higher level of wisdom that they keep about DNA transmutation and the records that are often, yeah, connected to the land and connected to the community as well, the grill keepers. Uh, on how do we actually heal this particular illness, this particular disease, right? These prophets, these griots, not prophets, they just have access to that information. So this is where we may find, um, yeah, people who come up with like solutions to particular illnesses. And if you ask them, where did you find this? They just, they just know, they will tell you, I knew, you know, um, one of my mentors, he knows at least like 11,000 solu solutions to different types of illnesses. And he's a grow keeper. I asked him, how do you know? He's like, I just know. I go out there and I know what I need to mix to literally heal this. And sometimes it's not even about like healing with a physical thing. Sometimes it's literally healing using energy medicine, right? So the gryots often work with energy, right? They can feel what the ailment of a person is and they can also um, know how to heal that, to work with energy and to work with the DNA to restructure whatever DNA encryption is creating that disease, to recode the DNA, right? So this is what I particularly do because I'm a girl keeper. I am particularly here to help recode DNA sequences that create illnesses so that we can heal. DNA, uh, bloodlines can heal. If a bloodline has a DNA sequence of diabetes, is there a way to heal that, that such that this diabetes doesn't keep coming again and again in a bloodline? Right? So for me, my training of how to do that happened with... Um, within the Isutunya realm, I had to go there and be shown how to do that. And I don't use anything physical. I work with energy and I work with sound and my hands and I can, I recode your DNA in the higher realms. But if you come to a session with me, all you feel is a lot of energy coming in and a lot of transmutation happening. You may feel a little weak and dizzy um, but I will be doing that recording where with the spiritual DNA where it exists, which is in within the Isutunya realm, right? Does that make sense? Those are the grow keepers, right? And um, my apprenticeship program is particularly to train uh, grow keepers on how to do this recording that I'm talking about, right? It sounds very techy techy what I'm talking about, but it's actually an ancient method that the Gryos have been given. Um, I say this because my great grandfather was a Gryot um, and he died when I was like nine years old, but he's been a mentor for me in the spirit realm. And I will ask him, did you know this? What y'all are teaching me is so high, high, 
highly advised. And he's like, yeah, I knew it in my time. And he was here in, he was born 1900, right? So he's like, yeah. And he was a, yeah, a healer for most of his life. It's like, yeah, I knew, we knew what we're teaching you now, which blows my mind because I speak about it in like, it sounds so highly advanced, like a scientific and it is, but that's because our ancestors were highly advanced and they knew these codes, right, that I'm sharing with you all. Right. I'm sharing this because it's time for us to upgrade how we understand ancestral lineage healing and understand that we have a lot of this within ourselves. I used to be, before I came to understand, I used to be like, why didn't this grandfather of mine, the one I just shared about, why didn't he train anyone? Because no one after him took over the process of healing. So I hear he was like really good with healing all types of illnesses. And I come in, I'm like, there's no one to teach me. He passed on before he could teach me. And what has come forward many times is uh, when I was like, why, why is it that I have to start from zero? They said, you're not starting from zero. Every single thing that your great grandfather, your great ancestors knew is already within you. It's in your DNA. It's never lost. That's one of the wisdom that our ancestors knew. And that's what, where the Gryos come in. They know even when colonization happened and they were forced to hide, they knew that they could hide wisdom in our consciousness, in the DNA. This is why we don't have a lot of books because they knew the highest way, the highest way to transmit wisdom is through the mind, through consciousness, um, instead of it's through actually through consciousness instead of the physical mind. You know, so many of us were so used to, I want to read it in a book for it to make sense, right? But that's actually a primitive way of thinking about what's possible. Our ancestors knew they can give you that information while you're sleeping. Instead of you reading in a book, they could train you in the higher realms and you wake up and you already know how to do that thing, which has been proven to me over and over again, right? So that's who the Gryots are. They can go into the ancestral realm and be taught things that we will think are crazy. A lot of the time people are saying, where do you find this information, Joy, right? And I'm like, I cannot explain it to you because for me, I exit through my consciousness. There are times, of course, where I read books, which also help me to like put things, certain things. But a lot of like the full reports that I write, that, that's literally where I go. I go into the Isutunya field and access that information there and bring it here. Because that's the, like I said, the most highly advanced way to hide anything. It's in you. All wisdom is hidden in you, right? Yeah. So the oracles, I know some people, they're like, oh, this is the first time I'm seeing an oracle. I don't know what an oracle is. Right? The oracle, they, or at least for me as an oracle, what I do is basically what I just shared, right? That I access, for me, I access knowledge not only from my blood ancestors, but also from my cosmic ancestors, the angelic consciousness or angelic reality or dimensions, all the way to consciousnesses that sometimes, you know, people are not even aware exist, like founder consciousness. Um, one example of a founder consciousness would be this, I believe everyone knows, the Elohim, for example, right? Um, in the Bible, they speak of the Elohim as the gods uh, who were part of creation, right? The elders, right? Um, oracles are able to connect with that level of consciousness, right? So I didn't start off knowing how to connect to all of this information. And this is why I was telling someone who was asking last week, like, can you literally uh, cultivate your isutunya? Yeah, you can, but it will take a really, really long time. And also you may not have the actual discernment and what we call dark arts training, the ability to navigate 
different realms and understand what's going on you may not know that because we this is not information that's given it's not written in a book and even as you're listening to me please do not assume you are receiving training from me because it's not training i'm just giving information the actual training is a different entire thing altogether so i think a lot of the time we think if i listen to people if i read a book then i'll receive training this is where you miss the point because training happens in the realm in the spirit realm and you have to kind of be ushered into that right so um the griots the more we work with this calling or this gifting or what i call a mission template you have a mission right so like part of my mission is to bring this wisdom that i'm sharing here um and i know it's it may sound sometimes like it's high level tikazi likes to call it phd uh but that's my mission right as a grail keeper and as an oracle to bring this kind of knowledge and for me to receive this kind of knowledge what you may not be aware of is how much i sleep every day right it's um i think in in zulu cosmology they will say you have itongo amatongo and amatongo will be the dreamers those that are dreaming this life the gods who are dreaming this lives right um the ancestors the elders who are creating what we are seeing as our lives right they are weaving it so when you are a griot you can meet these dreamer dream weavers of creation this creator consciousnesses and um a way to do that is often through sleep so this is one of the thing that you notice especially if you continue to cultivate your isithunya you will have a requirement to sleep i sleep almost every day like a nap in the middle of the day because i have to that's what it means to live with the ancestors i have to go there to receive information and come back and then share it or yeah use that to heal right so before a session with a client i'm going to sleep and i'm going to see all the the things that we have to work on before the session begins right that's how a lot of the grinds live their lives as you go a uh, higher and higher with it right um what's interesting is that as a kid i do not like sleeping during the day i used to think people who nap i'm like well, how are you doing that i could not understand it but ever since i've been on my griot journey the last 6 years i don't know what it's like to not nap during the day <laughs> i don't know like i was thinking today i slept a good 3 hours and received so much so much so much information of course particularly because it is uh the solar eclipse today right and i don't make myself sleep i just i get told it's time to go to sleep and i i go right i mean it doesn't come as like a huge voice it is time to go to sleep but it's just the feeling that i i need to go and sleep you know um so that's one of the things that you as as a griot you either sleep a lot and there are times where you're not even sleeping because there is another level of work that you're doing um in other dimensions i've had instances where i couldn't sleep for a good 3 days properly like to the point where all i was doing was just crying like i just want to sleep but my oracle was doing work in the higher dimensions so i had to be wide awake here so i say this to share about like what this life looks like actually when you are living with the ancestors what does that even mean what does it look like it looks like that like a lot of your life is connected to the dream world and a lot of your initiation is connected to that as well right and it also of course involves cultivating your wisdom as well like i read a lot as well on top of like me going to these other higher realms i also read a lot to understand what sometimes i i receive information and then i don't know what it is because i've never seen it before so i have to be and it's often the guides leading me to the right books you know if someone asks me what are the books you are reading i can't even really tell you how i find them but i'm led to them 
and then every time I will find the code there and I will be like, oh my God, that's what was happening. Sometimes this takes me a whole year before I understand why I experienced that event in the higher realms. Like, what was it? What was happening there? I don't understand it. Because your human is also part of this, all right? So, and also, of course, this is where having a mentor comes in. I've had experiences which I could understand, and then I go share with my mentor, and they're like, oh, that's, that's what this is, right? Uh, and then I'm able to map that. I'm like, oh, okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, that is about the gryots. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And I'm just going to, yeah, check the questions that I have here. Who? I was, that was like a big old transmission. I can feel it in my energy. Ooh, okay, almost did something. Yes, it is PhD. What I missed to school sounds PhD, but it's so amazing. If you love knowledge, if you love wisdom, if you love understanding things and a lot of people, when they listen to me the first time, you can either re get really overwhelmed and like, I can follow what she's saying. And then um, after six months, you are able to follow, right? This past Sunday with my students, where I was really teaching them like a very high level uh, understanding of our realm. And all of them, they're like, okay, we can follow what you're saying, Roy. And this, they've been doing this for seven months. Of course they can follow now. But before they used to be like, oh, what you know so if you are at a what please know that if the more you listen the more it will start to make sense the more you are going to be able to follow but also more than anything know that this is happening whatever you're listening to there's a human mind that's listening to me and a higher consciousness your soul and your spirit self that that are listening and they are integrating this information such that even if you're not aware of it a month, a year from now, it's going to land 100% and it will make sense to you. It doesn't matter how long that is, but it will eventually make sense to you. So sometimes it's all what's required is for you to just listen, even if you don't get the whole thing. But it's a little bit of like what a lot of the spiritual journeys are really about. Right. So uh, one last thing. Uh, send me your questions in the comments or in the question Part. There's a queue there if you have a question, a private question or a public. Oh, I mean, don't ask a super private question, but yeah. So one last thing about the Gryots. There's something called mission templates or mission commands or just missions, assignments, right? So every one of us, we have a mission, right? And this mission, you are here, this mission is what you're here to do. It's your soul's work that you're here to do. And this mission, when it comes to you, is going to come in steps. You won't get all of your mission at once. So everything that I just shared now, I couldn't say this my first year because I had to be initiated into what I now know after six years, right? So just so you are aware of that. Uh, so at a, at a particular point, you are currently with an assignment or a mission, whether you are aware of it or not, a soul mission. That may be that your mission right now is to heal your, your emotion body, your emotional body, or your mental body, or your ancestral um, lineage, bloodline, to heal your relationship, your physical body, whatever it is, that's a mission you are in. And a way to discover what that mission is, is to just look at what's happening in your life right now. That's usually a mission. And then when you are a griot in particular, you have a mission that's connected to other people, that you are here to help people heal, your lineages heal, um, other bloodlines to heal in a particular way. Right. So what makes an oracle like me different from the oracle you know or the prophet you know or the priest you know is our mission commands as in like what is the mission that they are here to do this is important for us to know because so many of us we are doing missions that are not our missions because 
we see everyone else doing that. Right? And this is something I had to be really taught because there were times I desired that I wasn't teaching PhD spirituality. I wish I was also teaching very simple things so that people can understand. But that's not my mission command. That's not the command that God has given on what I'm here to do as part of my life. That is not what the officers of the Christ are like. So if you're not doing your mission command, your team in the spirit realm, they just like, uh, you know, like, ma'am, this is not why we're here. We're here to help you with this mission, but you're doing the wrong mission, right? So that's what makes all the graves different from each other. It's your mission command, right? And part of discovering that mission command uh it, it obviously comes, the more you cultivate your isutunya, the more you cultivate your body of Christ. Someone asked me about the body of Christ. I am going to speak about it. Possibly uh, during the initiation protocol, I will, I will, I'll go more deeper into what, that, what I mean by that. Um, but yeah, so you have a mission command or a mission template or a mission assignment, whichever one you want to use. And that mission command, if you do it right, you get another one and another one and another one. Right. So if you've been here with me for five years, you can see how much my work has changed. And it will continue to change. It's not so much that my work is changing, it's that my mission commands are getting different each time. Right? So right now, my mission command is to work with lineage liberators to help people actually liberate their lineages right, and bring these high-level teachings to help awaken the griots. You see, if you are a griot, you have a big mission for sure, because you are basically what people are here to kind of listen to you on, like, what's going on, what is the next steps, you know. So, so whether that's through your, your prophecies or through your messages that you are sharing or through the light that you generate for others as a light worker or through um, your stories that you share with people, uh, your prayers, right? Your transmissions, your wisdom, whatever it is, this actually directs, the griots direct how consciousness grows. So if prophets are not waking up, the griots are not waking up, or that you are refusing your mission command, that means there is definitely where that is affecting the people who are meant to be guided by you, men mentored by you, led by you. Right? So at this level, I'm talking about the level of responsibility we have as the graduates. It's, um, yeah, it's kind of big. It's like a big deal, right? And I know like a lot of us, we, <sighs> the idea of responsibilities are something that we want to run away from. And it's not obviously easy as well to try to figure out all, everything that I'm talking about, right? Which is why I think for me, I've tried to run away from <laughs> uh, particular roles that I'm called to do, but I do them because I understand the actual impact of me not doing them. If I don't come here and share what I'm sharing, Imagine the level of confusion that continues to persist because I didn't come and share the truth of what griots are, what Isutunya is, right? We will be perpetuating um, distortions and perpetuating false light, perpetuating, allowing people to be confused about their mission, right? Anyway, that was just literally, honestly, um, my mission commanders, that I work with, they are these high level, very masculine beings who are so um, mission oriented. It's so intense. So if you know, if you're in the Wada Mystery School, you know how intense I, I am about like us stepping into our missions and doing what we're here to do. It's really not me. It's actually my elders who work through me. They are, yeah. That's part of what I'm here to do to help us step into our missions. Lineage Legacy is um, my mission guardianship where I'm doing that, where I really help you to understand what your mission is and also fully step into it and uh, begin your legacy work that you are here to bring to 
the earth at this particular point. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Let me see. Okay, some questions here. Okay. So I think I have uh, shared about the connection between the connection between the Gryots and Isithunya is that the Gryots often work with Isithunya, the field of Isithunya or the consciousness of Isithunya or the archetypes of Isithunya, which is often more of those that cosmic consciousness and cosmic angelic guidanceship that are often guided by that and uh, yeah. Yeah, even for me as a quantum healer, the first time I was ever taught what I shared earlier about DNA recoding, it happened in the in a realm of Itongo of Isutunya. That's the connection. It wasn't it wasn't my ancestors who my blood ancestors who taught me what I'm sharing. It was a different uh they were my spiritual ancestors, uh, or cosmic ancestors. Okay, my pen is gone. Does that make sense? Let me know. Okay, so uh, I think I've already answered how Isutunya is the Gryot. They're not, it's not so much as the Gryot are similar or the same as Isutunya, is that they function through Isutunya. Their work, their mission commands happen through Isutunya as well. And being a griot, is it a blood-related thing? Um, often, as I mentioned, when you have a spiritual DNA code or even a mission command, often you will incarnate into a bloodline that has received the same command before or that has cultivated that gift. So for me, my my ancestors, not even my ancestors, some of the people who are living right now in my life, in, at the same time as me, they are prophets in my lineage. They are teachers. So, yeah, the Muhammad people have many churches, you know, so that's prophecy. That's the griots, of course, right? Uh, my mother is a griot as well. Um, my grandfather from my father's side is a pastor as well, so he's working with that same. So, yes, often there will be a we will always be able to trace at least one of your ancestor, blood ancestor, who was also a griot. Right? As even the first, uh, the first group of griots that I spoke about, who are the oral historians and the storytellers, those in particular are definitely born in a lineage. And that's how they're often identified. That, that lineage, those are the oral historians, right? Yeah. Okay. So how do you know that you are a griot? How many people think that they are a griot? Send me a heart if you think you are. As a comment, um, are we going to be shy about it? Or are we going to be like, oh, I don't know. It sounds so special. It's not a special thing. It's just literally an assignment you've got. <laughs> um, yeah. So how do you know? Um, I think one of the ways to see that is often through the, the four spirits, do you function with a spirit of wisdom? Have people said you are wise beyond your years? Right? You are probably a griot right? because griots are wisdom keepers. Um, another way would be the spirit of revelation, like I mentioned, where you, like when people listen to you, they just get aha moments, right? That would be the spirit of revelation working within you. Uh, there will also be the spirit of Christ and the spirit of Christ will show itself through. Have you always been a devotional human being? Like there's something about like the Holy Spirit that awakens you. You have a love for God, for the Christ, for the divine. That's often a griot, right? You're devotional. Um, and the spirit of, which one am I forgetting? Prophecy right, where you can see, sometimes you dream of the future, or you get visions of the future, right, um, or sometimes even the past, right, 
um, yeah, that will probably make you a griot as well. Um, another thing about the griot that's interesting, by the way, is they have a very powerful creative potential because Isithunya is also creative consciousness, right? So your creativity, like whether you are like a, a writer, a musician, um, and any form of artistry, that's often Isutunya, by the way. So it's from the same field, right? All the poets, all the mystics, that's from the same field. So that's how you know you are a griot. You may be, so either you are the first griot, which is the oral historians who are here to document with their books, or the poets who are here to share with their poetry, that's a griot. Or you are here to do more of like, go into the ancestral realm for healing purposes, healing the DNA, right? That will make you uh, the second group, uh, which is more about healing. The other one is about creativity. So that's how you know that you are a griot. And then other things, of course, as you, in terms of how do you know it's time to, um, to cultivate? When Isutunya, Isutunya, by the way, awakens slowly within you, and then it will reach a critical mass where it will have to be kind of like initiated or utilized, right? So one of the ways you would see that um, is Isutunwa is overwhelming. So when you have overwhelm and anxiety, like it, it will actually look like anxiety, but it's actually not. What's happening is that you are actually sensing spirits. You are starting to be aware and conscious of the field and so this overwhelms you, right? So a lot of people who have like anxiety, anxiety attacks, overwhelm, they're often actually sensitive and they can feel the sensories of other realms around them. So then psychologically, psychologically they will say you have anxiety, but um, sometimes, majority of the time, it's actually in my work, I've noticed that those who have anxiety are often griots, actually. Uh, yeah, you are, you are sensitive, you are sensing the field. So you, there will be that, and this will increase the more you cultivate it. The more you do meditation, for example, or prayer, or ukupatla, the more your sensitivity to higher dimensions increases, and you start to feel these things, right? And then um, another thing I think I spoke about it is, uh, as time goes on, you will start to have been called to sleep. So in the middle of the day, you suddenly feel an overwhelming need to sleep. That's Itongo calling you. To, the dreamers calling you for you to go and receive the message. That's how, uh, how Isutunya also works. Right? So if you suddenly, like you get really overwhelmed and exhausted around people, um, get slightly sick after spending time with some people, also always have a need to sleep, you are probably a griot and your isutunya has already awakened, right? And it gets kind of like more and more. Yeah. Yes, there is definitely a nervous system overload. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's essentially the griots that's sensitive to the realms because you, you sense them far much more than other people, right, who are, not, who are not cultivating it and who also maybe don't have this mission command. They don't have it in them, so they don't sense it, right? Yes, okay. How or what was the initiation? Um, what was the initiation of my being an oracle? Uh, so for me, I was actually initiated uh, twice. I was first initiated as a prophet and then second as an oracle. The, the first one was within my Zwana cosmology, right? So this was awakening my prophetic gift. And the second one was uh, almost like a cosmic initiation or cosmic shamanism where I was initiated into the higher dimensional ways of working, right? Um, so... And in my life, I will probably initiate again. So I have not been initiated only one time. Right? So also these two ones I'm talking about, I mean the official ones, but I've had other, obviously, 
just natural trainings that happen whenever you are as you are a full-time oracle that just happens as well i'm currently going through an initiation right now but we're gonna talk about initiation protocol um on sunday so you can come over and hear a little bit more about that okay so last question how Oh, sorry, does it come with being misunderstood and hated by elders especially? Yes, well, not yes for yes, you are hated by elders, but uh, yes, you are often misunderstood. One, because when you are a griot, oh, I teach like even more definitely, okay, I won't go there. When you are a griot, you are bringing wisdom that does not yet exist in the collective consciousness. So this wisdom may be counter, it may look like it's the opposite of what the collective know. So often, of course, the collective is not going to accept that information just with ease. So it's likely that they will misunderstand that, may not even have the vocabulary for that. I mean, if you listen to how I speak, you know, like it, it, it takes a bit of time to really understand everything that I'm saying because I'm using all these words that sound new to you, right? I can also tell you that there are times I've spoken words I didn't know before and almost as if I'm creating words. People have asked me that. They're like, where do you get these words? It, this is information coming from higher consciousness realms. It's like, yeah, it's like, and when we're talking about higher consciousness realm, we're really talking about aspects of the collective that has already went through what we're going through. They have already passed that initiation and now they're just giving it to us as our elders, right? So it's a bit like you right now, if you've just gotten a degree, a master's degree, and you try to go give that information to high schoolers, right? The high schoolers are not gonna understand what you're saying with your PhD, bachelor's degree, gnosis of what biology is. They just want to know biology, biology as photosynthesis, as they understood it before. So if you come with like this other, more nuanced way of understanding why we breathe, they're just, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a lot for them. So of course you are going to be likely misunderstood. And in particular, you're going to be li likely misunderstood in your land more than any <laughs> other land which is me oh my Botswana people they look at me they're like what but um and then yeah I find that other people from outside my land they get what I'm saying or at least they're open to listen right so there is a certain level of being misunderstood but you have to understand it's because you're actually bringing Asian future knowledge particularly that future stuff, future stuff. It's like if you can see the future and you tell people this is what's going to happen, they will think you are, yeah, kind of like, yeah, lost it, right? So that definitely comes with that. And the part where you may literally annoy people or create a certain frequency of hate, even with the elders, is because it's almost as if you are challenging the past way of doing things, right? Even though it's not that you are challenging them, you are actually trying to expand because all initiation is consciousness expansion. Right? Okay, I always say that line. Um, but yes, conscious, we're expanding our awareness of what's happening in our reality, which is a physical and a spiritual reality. So when you're bringing spiritual gnosis, uh, wisdom, um, that others have not accessed before, yet yeah, obviously that ego may feel like you are lying, you are saying that they were wrong, and, 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 right? So it's honestly more of like the ego struggling with that, right? More than anything. So, and this is part of the huge initiation of the Griot. I can tell you for me, this has been so, so big for me because I'm like, it's like everything I've got to say is the opposite of what everyone is saying. How I teach Isitunya is like the opposite of what you may have been told, right? If you listen to it, I'd be like, ah, Isitunya is for everyone. While everyone was saying, Isitunya is for the special few. You see? 
yeah so yeah that definitely comes with the 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 task and the mission command of having to bring knowledge that comes from a very far away place from a consciousness that is yeah leaps ahead of our consciousness in terms of that cultivation right so yeah so what a mystery school is kind of doing this uh contradictory work which is often very easy for people to come and judge because the first thing they say is how are you teaching online as if knowledge cannot be transferred online but anyway it is what it is <laughs> I have gotten to a point where I can accept that that may be, uh, what is that saying? That the prophet is ever really loved from his own country. And often even a prophet is really ever loved during his time, right? Like, it's like you have to die first and then people are like, oh, that's what she meant. Oh, that's what he meant, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Boingile. Yes, I'm going to save this. I think those are all the questions, right? I've answered everyone, yes. Thank you everyone for um, coming here today, joining me. I hope you've gotten clarity on the Gryots. I'm going to be teaching initiation protocol. So we understand Isithunya, we understand what being a Gryot is. So now how do you initiate? What does that look like? So these are protocols that I personally think can be integrated and utilized. Right, because I think we were never ever given these protocols, right? So, in what are mystery schools, we are bringing these mystery teachings to the collective, right? So, if you are wanting to step into what I'm talking about, like understand it even more from a practical, somatic lens where you're actually experiencing it not just as wisdom, but you're experiencing connecting with higher consciousness. Um, that's what we're doing in what I missed to school. So if you are like at a beginner level, you can check out our membership, which is open for enrollment. If you are like a practitioner and you want to cultivate your, what I was talking about, you want to learn DNA recoding, right? You want to work with um, these higher consciousness beings who are our elders. That's what I'm doing in my apprenticeship program, right? And if you are wanting to know what your mission command is and you actually want to bring it to the earth, this is Lineage Legacy where I'm helping you build your legacy in a very, it's a, one of the most practical courses I have in that is about like your actual life. And this is where we're talking about yeah, how to be the oracle, the prophet, the girl keeper that you are and how to actually reach the impact that you are meant to reach. It's not as easy as we want to make it seem, right? And if you are a water bearer, a child of the waters, I have been given a mission command beginning of this year by what is called the Aqua Mothers. These are cosmic mother water, water mothers that came to me and they said that I have to bring these codes to water babies. If you're a water baby, a water seed, right? So the return of the Asian water bearers. It is a completely channeled course which yeah kind of be mind-blowing really uh so if you are a water bearer and you want to understand your calling why the water calls you the ways of water check out that workshop um, which is also open for enrollment thank you everyone have a good night i will save the, the live now <laughs> bye